Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Monday, March 14th, 2022, and welcome back in to the Locked on Orioles podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb, and coming up on today's episode, we've got an Orioles signing to talk about. That's right. The O's have made their first post-lockout free agent acquisition, and the player is Robinson Chirinos, the 37-year-old catcher who spent a lot of his time with the Texas Rangers and most famously in the World Series with the Houston Astros. But on today's episode, we'll talk about the Chirinos deal and his history in Major League Baseball, what kind of player he is. Then we'll talk about how he fits into the Orioles in 2022 and what this signing means for Adley Rutschman and other catchers that are in camp. And then we will talk about the Orioles' non-roster invitees to spring training, who were announced on Sunday, talk about the big names on the list, and who maybe got snubbed from being in Sarasota and getting a true look for the opening day roster. But that's all coming up on this episode of the Locked on Orioles podcast. So we've got a signing to talk about. Pretty exciting stuff. The O's bring in Robinson Chirinos to help with the catching position at the major league level. And first, just wanted to give you some background on who is Robinson Chirinos. If you're not super familiar with one of the game's, you know, kind of steady backups to starting catchers over the last 10 years or so. So to start with Chirinos, he's 37 years old, been a catcher his whole career in the big leagues. He'll be 38 in June. So definitely is getting up there a little bit. And the Orioles bring him in on a one-year $900,000 deal. It was first reported by Marley Rivera of ESPN, confirmed by John Heyman later on Saturday night. And basically, Chirinos becomes kind of the backup catching option for the Orioles. But let's talk about how he kind of got to this point in his career and start with the 2021 season. He was actually in camp with the New York Yankees in 2021, but he suffered an injury. It was a wrist fracture that he had uh, right about this time last year and ended up having to get surgery. So he missed a couple of months. By the time he came back, he couldn't get to the big leagues. And in early July, the Yankees released him actually on the 4th of July last year. And immediately he was snatched up by the Chicago Cubs. They signed him on July 5th. He actually entered the game uh, at the end of the game on July 5th, was immediately signed to the Cubs active roster. And he spent the rest of the season with the Chicago Cubs until he actually suffered another injury in late September. Uh, His last game last year was September 22nd. Then he had an oblique injury and missed the last couple of weeks of the season with Chicago. But with the Cubs last year, it was 45 games for Robinson Chirinos between early July and late September when he was with the team. Got 112 plate appearances, so it wasn't exactly the everyday starting catcher when he signed with the Cubs. Obviously, they had Wilson Contreras on that roster, but he suffered an injury. They had Romine there as a catcher. It was a lot of moving parts with the Cubs last year with injuries and with the fact that they traded half their roster at the trade deadline. But for Chirinos, in those 45 games, 112 plate appearances, he hit 227, but with a 324 on base, a 454 slugging percentage. And at the end of the day, he had five home runs and he had a 108 WRC plus. So at the end of the day, he was an above average hitter at 37 years old as a guy who his only defensive innings came as a catcher. You know, he wasn't DHing. He was getting days off. He was maybe defensive replacement a little bit, pinch hitting a little bit, but He's catching, he's 37, and he's still got a 108 WRC+. plus. That tells you, you know, the bat is there. That's pretty impressive for a catcher who's pushing 40 years old. Now, to be fair, 2020, the shortened season, was not kind to Chirinos. He did not have a very large sample size that year, but it was not good. He played in 26 games in 2020, split that time between the Rangers and the Mets, and it was tough to watch at the plate. He hit just 162 in that shortened time. He had a 33 WRC plus. And I think many kind of thought it was done for Torinos. You know, he signed that minor league deal with the Yankees and then ended up, you know, catching on with the Cubs last year. But the reason it was so disappointing from Torinos in 2020 is really how good he was in 2019, helping the Houston Astros get back to the World Series. He played in 114 games for the Astros in 2019. People forget Torinos was the main catcher for the Houston team that went to the World Series just three years ago. I mean, he was in his mid-30s and he was getting it done. He had 437 plate appearances in the regular season that year with Houston. He had a respectable 238, had a 347 on base, a 443 slugging. He hit 17 home runs for Houston in 114 games. You know, that's a pace for a guy who plays a little bit more to be at least a 20 home run hitter 
you know, at age 35, essentially at that point. Pretty impressive to me. He had a 112 WRC plus that year with the Houston Astros. He had a 2.2 war that season, according to Fangraphs. I mean, he was 35. He was a good player and a starter for a World Series team. Now, granted, he did bat basically eighth and ninth all season for a very good Houston lineup that went to the World Series. But if you're getting a 112 WRC plus from, you know, at best the seven hole, but usually the eight and nine hole, they took that. And it was a pretty impressive offensive season. And he did have a really interesting postseason because, of course, he did most of the catching for Houston in their run to the World Series when, of course, they lost in Game 7 to the Washington Nationals. He hit only 150 in that run to the World Series. He had only six hits, but three of those hits were home runs, and two of those homers came in the World Series. If you remember back, he homered in Game 3 and in Game 4, of the World Series in D.C. that year, helping Houston actually win all three games in D.C. Remember, it was that weird World Series where the Nats won two in Houston, Houston won all three in D.C., and then the Nats came back and won game six and seven in Houston to win the World Series. Torinos' two homers were a big part of Houston winning game three and four in that World Series and tying the series up at two. He was kind of a big piece for that team in the postseason. And, you know, he was a starting catcher at age 35, so why can't he at least be still a backup here at age 37 going into 38. And honestly, he had success in 2018 as well. 2019, he had signed with the Astros, but 2018 was his final year with the Texas Rangers, his final of six seasons with the Rangers, in which he played 113 games. He was their number one catcher, again, over 400 plate appearances, and he hit 222, but, you know, a 338 on base. He had 18 home runs. That was a career high for him in 2018, a 102 WRC plus. He had a positive war. I mean, he had three years in a row, 2017, 18, 19, where he hit 17, 18, and 17 homers in still somewhat limited playing time. I mean, in 2018 or 2017 with Texas, he was a straight down the middle split time catcher. He played 88 games and he hit 17 home runs. So the bat for Chirinos, it is there in his career, 647 games. He's got a 231 average of 325 on base, and he's a 102 WRC plus hitter with a 5.7 war, according to fan in his career. Essentially, he's been an above average major league hitter while being a catcher his entire career. It's kind of a perfect guy to have as your backup. But of course, the last thing you look at in a backup catcher is what is the defense, because that's even more important than a starting catcher. And especially what we'll talk about, you know, is Chirinos Adley's backup, the defense is even more important. And that's where it becomes interesting because Chirinos has not been known as a great defensive catcher throughout his career. Actually, one of the reasons that he did not come back to Houston in 2020, some of it was, you know, the bat didn't do great in the playoffs, but also Houston had gotten Martin Maldonado, who was a much better defensive catcher. And although his bat wasn't up to Torinos's, they found that Maldonado was more effective and just more valuable for the team. And Torinos kind of moved into a lesser role and then didn't come back to Houston after 2019. So for his career, it's a negative 14 defensive run saved, which is not a great stat. You know, these, these advanced fielding stats aren't great, uh, but, you know, zero is league average. He's at negative 14. It's not a crazy negative number. But at the end of the day, he's been known as kind of a below average, not terrible, but just below average defensive catcher. But here is a good thing that happened in 2021. You know, we talk about pitch framing. That's a big part of catcher defense, not just, you know, calling a game. It's not just throwing runners out, handling the running game. It's also about pitch framing and being able to steal strikes. And we know we have these stats now that can tell you how good of a framer a player is. Well, for Robinson Chirinos, there is a framing value on fan graphs, which basically is a value that, you know, zero is, is about league average. And then if you're a good framer, you're in the positive value. And if you're a bad framer, you're in the negative value. Well, he's been in the negative for his entire career since he came up to the big leagues in 2011. He's been in the negative until 2021. Now, he wasn't super positive, but he was in the positive on the framing value on fan graphs for the first time in his career in 2021, which tells me this is something that Chirinos has been working on, is the pitch framing. And that is huge for a guy who's about to turn 38 to start changing his game a little bit. I think he's realizing that the bat that he had is not there still. He's still a solid hitter, but he's not the hitter he was you know, five, six, seven years ago. But he knows if he can get that framing value up, get that defense up, he can still stick around at age 38. 
And I tend to believe that that's what the Orioles saw and found a pretty good combination at catcher for a guy who's still an above average hitter, still has pop in the bat and is getting better defensively, still working on it and finally became a solid framer for the first time in his career when he was with the Cubs last season. So you put that all together, not a bad signing by the Orioles. You know, this is a guy who was signed by the Cubs all the way back in 2008. It was actually kind of full circle uh, for Chirinos. He was then dealt in the Matt Garza trade uh, that sent Matt Garza to the Cubs and sent Chirinos along with Chris Archer and many other guys over to the Tampa Bay Rays. He then made his debut with Tampa in 2011. Uh, then he was sent over to Texas, came back to the bigs with the Rangers in 2013 and has basically been in the big leagues since. But I like this signing and it gives a, a veteran presence for the Orioles. But that's what I want to talk about next. How does Chirinos, after we've gone through all that he brings on the baseball field, how does he fit into this Orioles team in 2022. So we will get to that in just a second. But first, let's talk about betonline.net, the presenting sponsor of today's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. Because listen, yesterday was a great day in sports. It was Selection Sunday for both the men's and the women's college basketball tournaments. That means the bracket is out. And next up, oh man, it is time for March Madness. It's that time of year again, the tournament is finally upon us. And from all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. And BetOnline also remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. You can really get it all at BetOnline.net. And it's not just basketball either. They're your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to the website today, use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at betonline.net, where the game starts. So we're back to Robinson Chirino. So the Orioles bring in on a one-year $900,000 deal. There are incentives in the deal that he can make uh, about $75,000 more. So at the end of the day, if he hits all of his incentives, basically he'll make about a million dollars with the Orioles. Uh, and if he's traded, there's also a bonus as well. So he could make a little over a million dollars in 2022. But let's talk about how he kind of fits in to this Orioles team. Because, you know, we knew the Orioles were trying to add a little more catching depth this offseason. And it's been interesting because they've gone out and they've already gotten two other catchers on minor league deals. Remember, they brought in Anthony Benboom, who was with the Rays and the Angels recently. And they brought in Jacob Nottingham, who spent last year with the Mariners and the Brewers, both who have been kind of backup catchers throughout their career. Both were brought in on minor league deals earlier in the winter. So the question really does become, did they believe in Benboom and Nottingham enough to be the backup to Adley? Or do they need a more veteran guy who has more major league experience to come in and it sounds like that was the guy in Torino. So here's where I'm really interested in how this all works out with Robinson Torinos, because, you know, Jacob Nottingham was already impressing at minor league camp. He was showing a lot of power from the right side of the plate, solid defense. Ben Boom was there too. And I figured, you know, at the end of the day, if Adley made the opening day roster, which he deserves to be there, I figured that either Nottingham or Ben Boom would be his backup. They would kind of fight it out in spring training and the winner would get the backup job and the loser would either go to triple a or maybe even just opt out of the contract and become a free agent and you know i thought that would be pretty solid and honestly my other thought and i've talked about this on the podcast as well was that you know even if the orioles want to manipulate hadley rutschman's service time and keep him down in the minors for a few weeks or a month or whatever it may be i thought the orioles could probably get by with nottingham and ben boom as their two catchers in the majors those two guys kind of fight it out for a month and then whoever's better at the end of that month when Adley comes up, that guy stays the backup and the other guy gets DFA'd. But I kind of like that the Orioles went out and got this Chirinos option because he still fits in either way the Orioles want to swing it. If the O's do want to manipulate the service time, keep Adley down in AAA for a bit, Robinson Chirinos becomes an easy fill-in as your starting catcher for those couple of weeks. You have Nottingham and Ben Boom battle out for the backup catcher job, the one who wins it is on the roster, and then it's those two catchers for a couple of weeks. Then you bring up Adley. He replaces, let's say, Nottingham, because Nottingham is the better catcher than Ben Boom. He already has a leg up. He Adley replaces Nottingham. Nottingham gets DFA'd, and it's Adley Rutschman and Robinson Chirinos. Or what you should do if you're Mike Elias, you put Adley Rutschman on the open day roster as your starting catcher, 
And you have a very, very solid backup option. You have Robinson Chirinos, who's been in the big league since 2011, 37 going on 38, can still hit the ball, is getting better defensively behind the plate, and is a perfect option to relieve Adley of his catching duties. You know, when Adley needs a day off or DHs or maybe plays a little first base. And the other thing is, what a veteran presence to have, not just in the clubhouse as a whole, you know, bringing a guy who's done it all, but to mentor Adley Rutschman a little bit a guy who has you know, been a good hitter from the catcher position for most of his career. You think about that, that's what Adley wants to be in the major leagues. How about this about Chirinos as well? I mean, he's played the World Series. He played the World Series in 2019. He hit two home runs in the World Series. He's a starting catcher for the Houston Astros in 2019. He was also in the postseason with the Rangers in 2015 and 2016. So he's been around the block like that. He's been through a lot of different organizations, worked with a lot of players. I really like this signing by the Orioles. You know, at most they paid $1 million for Robinson Chirinos. I hope the only thing I'm worried about, I hope this doesn't make them a little more willing to hold Adley down because now they have more of that veteran presence to be the starting catcher and they don't have to rely on a minor league signing to be the starting catcher if Adley stays down. But at the end of the day, I like this and I feel good about Rutschman and Chirinos as the two catchers for the Orioles moving forward this season. And, you know, here's really the thing. You compare that to Severino and Cisco or Severino and wins for the last couple of years. I mean, you got to give the edge to Adley and Torinos. And to be honest with you, the way Pedro Severino has played, I think I would take Torinos pretty easily over Severino and obviously Cisco and wins. So just having Chirinos in there is a step up. Then you add Adley and all of a sudden you go from one of the worst catching duos to top 10. And then when Adley starts hitting, probably even better in the major league. So I like this move by the Orioles and uh, Chirinos should be on this team on opening day, no matter what he should fit in. Well, hopefully that bat sticks around and hopefully those framing numbers, which got so much better in 2021, continue to get better because that's going to make him a whole lot more valuable to the Orioles and to this young pitching staff as well. And remember, you know, he wasn't with the, the Astros during the rebuild. He was only there in 2019, but You know, he saw what success looks like with a team that did what the Astros did, and he was there at the back end. And, you know, he saw a lot of good young pitchers and worked with them. I think that's going to help the O's staff as well. But Robinson Chirinos, or if you'd say it with the accent, Robinson Chirinos is now with the Baltimore Orioles. But he's going to obviously be in Major League camp because he's on a Major League deal. But the Orioles, you know, they always bring up non-roster invitees, to spring training, to major league camp, guys who aren't on the 40-man roster. And the O's announced that list of non-roster invitees on Sunday. And coming up, we're going to talk about who is on that list, who was maybe snubbed a little bit. But first, you know, something that never snubs you, that is Built Bar. Because every Built Bar you eat is so delicious and it's good for you. It's just the perfect combination. And, you know, here's what you're missing with Built Bar. All these great flavors of these bars, they're just 130 calories. They have just four grams of sugar, just four net carbs. Each bar has 17 grams of protein. Each bar is covered in 100% chocolate. They've got amazing flavors. Peanut butter brownie, my favorite. They've got coconut almond. And new for this month, they've got white chocolate cookies and cream always coming out with new flavors as well. But it's not just the bars. They've also got the Built Puffs. If you haven't tried them, you're really missing out there. The first ever protein infused marshmallow. It's a marshmallow covered in chocolate, great flavors, just so many good products at built.com. So make sure to go to built.com, use the promo code lock 15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that is promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. So we're talking Orioles here as they bring in Robinson Chirinos, on a one-year major league deal to probably be Adley Rutschman's backup catcher in 2022. So he'll be in major league spring training. And we learned on Sunday, something that we already knew. I mean, let's be honest. We knew this was going to happen, but Adley Rutschman will also be in major league spring training as a non-roster invite, because remember he's not on the 40 man roster. So all the guys on the 40 man roster are guaranteed to be in major league spring training. And then the Orioles brought up a group of other guys who are in Major League Spring Training. So let me just read out the guys who are going to be in Major League Spring Training with the Orioles. Here's the pitchers. Marcos Duplan, who of course was in the O's bullpen last year. Rico Garcia, who the Orioles signed 
to a minor league deal this offseason. Ryan Hartman, who the O's got off waivers from the Astros last year, they were able to keep in the system a left-hander. Blaine Knight is up in Major League Spring Training for the first time. Hard-throwing right-hander who was drafted in 2018, finished the year at Norfolk last year. Travis Lakins is in Major League Spring Training, coming off that nasty elbow injury last year, missed most of the season. He is back and healthy. Ofelki Peralta, who jumped from high A to triple A last year. The right-hander will be in Major League Spring Training. Denny Reyes is in Major League Spring Training, another right-hander who the Orioles signed to a minor league deal this offseason. Of course, the top pitching prospect in baseball, Grayson Rodriguez, will be there. Cody Sedlock will be there, the former O's first-round pick, who's slowly making his way up the system. We'll see if he can finally break through to the big leagues. Nick Vespi will be there for the Orioles. Of course, a guy we thought was going to be gone in the Rule 5 draft. Well, there is no Rule 5 draft this year, so Vespi, the left-hander, sticks around. And Spencer Watkins will also be in Major League Spring Training. Of course, we saw a lot of him in the big leagues last year. Orioles re-signed him to another minor league deal. Then there are six catchers in camp with the Orioles. Now, it helps that there are zero catchers on the 40-man roster. Until now, Robinson Chirinos makes one catcher on the 40-man roster, but he'll be joined by six non-roster invitee catchers. Anthony Bemboom, who we talked about, came in on the minor league deal this offseason. Brett Cumberland, remember, he's still in the organization. He was in Norfolk last year, came over as a part of the Kevin Gosman trade from the Braves a couple of years ago. Maverick Handley, how about that? will be in Major League Spring Training. 2019 draft pick out of Stanford, elite, elite defender who's gotten so much better with the bat working at driveline this offseason. Watch out for Hanley this year. Jacob Nottingham, another one of the minor league free agent signings, is there. Cody Roberts will be there, who was a really nice piece for the Orioles and the Miners last year. Just provided a lot of catching depth for them. He will be there to provide more catching depth in camp. And then, of course, Adley Rutschman will be there as well. And then in terms of the position players, the Orioles really didn't bring many other guys up. In the infield, they went with Patrick Dorian, of course, the breakout star of the O's minors last year in Bowie, ended the year in Norfolk. They'll have Shed Long there, who the O's brought in on a minor league deal this offseason, definitely will compete for a major league roster spot, can play all positions in the infield and a little outfield as well. And then Richie Martin will be back. Remember, Orioles DFA'd him, uh, but he did not get claimed. He stayed in the organization in the minors and, He'll try to win a spot back on the major league roster. And then it's just two outfielders for the Orioles. They've got Robert Newstrom coming up. Another guy who we thought might be gone in the rule five draft, no rule five draft. So Newstrom and his long home runs stick around and he'll be in major league spring training. And then Kyle Stowers, who is the Orioles co minor league player of the year with Adley Rutschman last year with his big season, he will be in Sarasota with the major league guys as well. So that's kind of the list. Really. There's not too many, big time snubs. It feels like all these guys should have a chance to compete for a major league roster spot on opening day. And they're all going to get that chance. I really came up with, with two guys who I thought were snubs. And I felt like only one of them was a big time snub. That was Cole Uvula, who is not on the spring training non-roster invite list. Uvula, of course, was the Orioles top pick in the minor league phase of the rule five draft. They grabbed him out of the Rangers organization, already 28 years old, a right-handed reliever uh, who has been in AAA for the past couple of years. Uh, he was like one of the first driveline guys, still hasn't been to the big leagues, but I thought he'd be pretty close to the bigs with the Orioles and would get a shot. So we probably won't see him on the opening day roster. And then the only other guy I would probably consider a snub from this list is Mason McCoy. I don't think he has a great chance. And maybe you could throw Caden Grenier into that list as well. I don't think either of those guys had a chance at all to make the opening day roster, but because the Orioles infield has so many question marks on it, I would have figured that maybe either McCoy or Grenier would just get a shot in big league camp to at least show what they can do, bring some defense, um, and at least you know give the Orioles something to think about if there is an injury. Uh, but kind of Richie Martin, I guess, fills that role and uh, McCoy and Grenier did not get the call, so they will stay in minor league camp. And it also makes you think, you know, the Orioles are probably going to have to sign another infielder. And so uh, that will give them another infielder to work with in big league camp. But that kind of takes us to the finish here. And what's next here on the podcast and for the Orioles, because they've got their backup catcher signing Robinson Chirinos to a one-year deal. But there's got to be more moves coming because there's been a lot of moves this weekend. Free agency opened up with the CBA coming together, being ratified at the end of last week. 
And finally, we got a lot of movement. You know, we had a couple of big trades and a lot of free agent signings, but not the huge, huge names yet. You know, no Chris Bryant off the board, you know, no Trevor Story, no Carlos Correa yet. Still some solid names who have been signed, but some guys connected to the Orioles have also signed. Some of the relievers I've talked about have signed elsewhere. A couple of the shortstop options for the Orioles, Andrelton Simmons, he has signed with the Cubs on a one-year deal, and Jose Iglesias signed with the Rockies on a one-year deal. There were reports that the Orioles were talking with Iglesias about a potential reunion on a one-year deal, but he signed with Colorado instead to replace Trevor Story. So you look at the Orioles, they're going to have to sign a shortstop, and I'm just saying Carlos Correa is still a free agent. But we'll be back for the rest of this week with more episodes. Plan is to be back on Wednesday. If the Orioles make another major league signing, we could be back before then. But if not, we'll be back on Wednesday to talk about some minor league signings that the Orioles have made recently. And we'll start with Andres Angula, a minor league catcher who the O's signed to a minor league deal a couple weeks ago, was previously in the giant system, should bring some catching depth. We'll learn more about him on Wednesday's episode, unless, of course, there's another major league signing. Then we'll get to that here on the pod. But until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.